Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video of Python series, I am going to cover list in Python. So again, this is a very important topic in Python. I am going to cover it in two parts so that one video is not very lengthy. When we talk about list in my previous videos, I have already talked about data types, right? So I've already given an example that we can have a basket. That basket is nothing but it's a variable. And in that basket, in that variable, we store object. Object is nothing but the data. And the, uh, you know, the flavor of that object or the flavor of that item is the data type, right? So list is nothing but it is a data type. It is, it, it is a format to store the data, right? And you can store multiple types of data in the list. So for example, I told about string, like we talked about few data types, right? We talked about string and we talked about integer, we talked about float, right? So when we talk about string, anything that is in double quotes becomes a string, right? And then anything which is not in double quotes and is countable is integer, right? A number is an integer. Then anything that has a decimal point, that is nothing but float that we have already discussed. Now list is nothing but the collection of multiple data types, right? Or the same data types together is called a list, right? So when let's go ahead with the, you know, a simple two liner statement, which is very important over here because each word here means something. After that, we will move on to the pie charm and we will see how do we create lists, what are the different functions that we can use with the list, right? So when we talk about list, list is nothing but it is a versatile data type. It is a versatile data type in Python that stores collection of multiple objects. So this list can actually store multiple types of object. It can store your integer, it can store your string, it can store your decimal as well right and in fact it can store a list list also within so list can store multiple types of object it can store a string it can store a decimal anything right and it can store same type of object or different types of object as well so that is nothing but a list now lists are mutable in nature they can be changed now in a basket I can have an apple, I can have a, you know, orange, I can have a brinjal, I can have a tomato, I can have a potato. Now, I can, if I say I want to add spinach to my basket, I can do that. If I want to remove apple from my basket, I can do that. So that is nothing, but it means that lists are mutable in nature. They can be changed. So now let's move on to PyCharm and see exactly about the list. So now if you have been watching my previous video, you already know about this Python project and all these Python files. And remember to like, share and subscribe my channel as well. So here I'm going to click on new and I'm going to create a new Python file named as list because we are going to talk about list and hit enter. I'm just going to uh, click on shift alt and dot to increase the size of my font so that you all are very comfortable. So when I talk about list, right, how do I create a list? So first of all, I need to create to, to create a list. I need to create a variable. So let's say I say my underscore list is thus the my variable name. It's the variable name that will hold my list and list is what collection of data types, different data types or different types of data. So let's say I want to put in apple, right? Then let's say I want to put grapes. Then let's say I want to put onion, right? And then let's say I want to put uh, potato, right? Uh, let me just check the spellings. Let me just put it in quotes. And then I have missed quotes here. So all of these are strings, right? Now, moment I add a square bracket, opening and closing. Now, everything, if I add it inside a bracket, square bracket, open and close, that becomes a list, right? So this is how you write a list. So anything inside a square bracket becomes a list. Now, this is a list of same data type, of same type of objects, all are strings, right? So if I want to print my list, right? How do I do that? I will simply say print and then inside print, I will say my list the name of my variable this is the name of my variable and now i will just select my current file to run it and i'll simply run it so the moment i run it you can see on the console it says grapes apple onion potato right in the same order so order is also maintained so if i have written apple first it will always give me apple first if i say grapes 
second, then it will always give me grape second. If I say onion third, it is going to give me onion third. So this is called your list. Now, can I create a list without anything, right? Can I have a basket without anything and say that this basket is reserved to keep multiple objects? Can I do that? Yes, I can do that. I can simply say list zero one. So I'm creating a variable and I'll just create an empty list. I'll, I'll just put square brackets and I'll not put anything inside it. Here, what does it mean? It simply means that I'm saying that I have a basket and it is reserved to keep multiple objects together. Multiple objects together means I'm writing a list, right? So if you see this list 01 and I'm now trying to print list 01, so you can actually see it printed an empty list. So this is how you can print an empty list as well. Now, let's say I want to create a list, right? With multiple data types. So let me just copy this my list right now let's say my list apple grapes onion potato now here let's say i put one then i put five then i put let's say 9.6 right so what is this one and five are nothing but these are integers right 9.6 is a decimal can i do that now let me say print and then let me say my list now if i do that and i run it you will actually see that the apple grapes onion potato one five and 9.6 all gets printed. So this is how you can actually store, you know, different types of uh, values inside your list. Now, let's say I, I have this basket. I have multiple things inside my basket and I want to count it. Now, how do I count it? I can say, I can simply use length function to count the number of elements inside my list. So apple, grapes, onion, potato, one, five, nine point eight or 9.8 or 9.6 it is called element each of this is called elements of the list so if i want to print if i want to print the length of the list how many elements are there i can use length function which is nothing but len i can simply say my list like print me the length of the list right now if i run it you can see it says seven so how many elements are present apple grapes onion right three four, five, six, seven. So total seven elements are present and you can see that it printed you the length of your list. So it, it will give you the count of how many elements are actually present inside your list. Now, the other thing is, you know, can I have a list inside a list, right? Can I have a list inside a list? Yes, you can have a list inside a list. So that is called multi-dimensional list so let me create a variable named as one three dimensional list and inside that let me put in let's say i create a list and inside this list i create another list now in that list let me put bhavna and the second element let me put as bedi and then another then outside of that list let me put in loves and then again an element i'll put as a list and inside that let's let's say python right now what let me do uh, let me do uh, another thing over here is let me print my list right let me say print and then say multi-dimensional list now the moment i run it you can actually see there were lists get printed now what is there in my list this is my list so the the outer brackets which you see over here right and now this is the first element now this first element is actually a list right the element can be anything it can be a list it can be a string, it can be an integer, anything. So I've shown you that how a list can be an element inside a list. Now, loves is again an element. Now, it is a string, right? Now, this Python is again an element which is, which is a list. So that is called nothing but a multi-dimensional list in Python, right? So this is how you actually... Uh, you know, or create a list inside a list in Python. Or also remember that, so for example, I'll just give you one example. So let's take this particular list, which I have, my list, right? So this is the list, I'm just copying it, right? And I am pasting it here, right? So now if you see Apple, right? Now when you talk about counting in the list, right? When you say, when you count from left to right, when I start with Apple to the end, each element so apple is an element right grape is an element so each element has an index value so index value is nothing but from left to right it starts with 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so we have seven elements so it goes till the end right if you count it from left to right 
but if you count it from right to left it starts from minus 1 right minus 2 and then it will go to minus 3 right and then it will go to minus 4 right and let me just simply write it it will go to minus 5 then it will go to minus 6 right so basically this is how it will happen so uh, when i say that zero so apple is zero grapes is one onion is two potato is three one is four so these are the index right these are the places apple is at zeroth place grape is at first place if you count it from left to right but if you count it from right to left right then 9.6 is at minus one five is at minus two one is at minus three Potato is at minus 4, onion is at minus 5, grapes is at minus 6 and apple is at minus 7. So this is how you count the elements and the index value of elements in a list. So this is how you actually do it. So remember that you know uh, how we are counting each and every element in our list. So this is how you actually do it. Okay. Now this is how you count each and every element in a list. Now if I want to fetch a value from my list. Now how do I do that? I will use these indexes to fetch the value. So if I say my list and if I use open and close brackets and I say 0. Right. Let me print it as well. Right. Let me use it inside the print function. If I use it. If I say 0. Right. And if I run it. What will happen? Whatever is present at the 0th index that will come as an output what is that zeroth index zeroth place that is apple right now if i similarly if i uh, you know copy the same thing and let me uh, let me put in you know one two here so let me put in one here right and let me put in two here now again if i run it right what will happen apple grapes and onion should come into picture right up uh, apple grapes and onion so if you see apple is at zeroth position one first position is grapes onion is at second position but now what i do is let me say print my list minus one so get me the element which is present at the minus one position now what is that what is that minus one position that is the last element now if i run it what is the last element 9.6 so that came up so this is called indexing right this is called indexing and you know we will we are going to cover this concept later on in slicing as well so we have something called a slicing which uses this concept so always remember that when you count from left to right it starts with zero one two three incremental numbers now when you start from right to left it is minus one minus two minus three and like so on and whenever you have to fetch a value from a list this is how you do it you will say list and then add the particular and just uh, you know you just put in your index value so 0 apple minus 5 now what will be the minus 5 so now let me just copy and I say fetch me the minus fifth position now if you look here at the data side right it is my 9.6 is minus 1 5 is minus 2 1 is minus 3 potato is minus 4 and onion is minus 5 right so in the minus 5 it should give you onion so you can see that it gave onion as the output right similarly it goes for the multi-dimensional list as well now if you want want to fetch a value from a multi-dimensional list right how do you do that now let me show you how to fetch a value from multi-dimensional so it is the same way the same principle actually comes over here so now let me say inside the print let me say multi-dimensional list now let me say zeroth element i want to and get the zeroth element now zeroth element is nothing but the first element now first element is a list so it will give me the list in the output right now from this list itself i want to get the first element so again i will say zero same 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 concept so this is zero this hole is one this hole is uh, two right now inside this hole zero again bhavna is zero bedi is one right so again if i print this right again if i run this zero zero so you will see that bhavna gets printed now if i say instead of that i want to print 
let's say 0 and 1 and then I run it over here. Now you will see that the baby gets printed, right? So this is how you actually fetch values from the multi-dimensional lists as well. So I hope you like this particular video. I don't want to, you know, make it uh, longer. So we'll see, you know, the next concept, the next functions that we can use with the list, list in the next video. So keep practicing and do remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.